Democracy had been taking root in Brazil after years of military dictatorship. But with a president impeached, another put in jail, and a nation bitterly divided, democracy there is now in crisis. Now, a new documentary that is up for an Oscar this weekend asks, is Brazil's democracy just a short-lived dream? And could this happen elsewhere? Take a look. It felt like a change of symbols. But something in our social fabric started to change. The country divided into two parts. And this wall... ...would rip us apart. One of the government's official Twitter accounts has been attacking the film's director, accusing her of spreading lies about her country. Well, we spoke to the director and one of the producers of the documentary. Have a watch. Joining us now is Petra Costa, who is the director of The Edge of Democracy, and Joana Natasegara, the producer of The Edge of Democracy. Ladies, thank you very much for being with us, and congratulations, first of all, on the nomination. Um, fantastic documentary. I loved it. I want to start with Petra with you, because obviously you narrate it, or you're right in the middle of that documentary. Explain to us, Petra, at what point you decided to tell this story, because this is a story that has been unfolding for quite some time. It's history, of course, in the making for any of us who have been following uh, Brazilian history and Brazilian democracy. Yes, in March 2016, I went to film a protest in the streets of Rio and was really shocked by what I saw. There were people asking for the return of the military dictatorship, a regime that had killed and tortured thousands of people in Brazil. I never thought that in my lifetime I would see people asking for the return of such a brutal regime. And so I started filming in the streets and immediately impeachment trials began in Congress and we managed to get access and film the entire impeachment process of Dilma Rousseff when we thought that story had finished and we were editing the film, Tamer, her vice president, was almost impeached. We went mm. back to film that, and then Lula's imprisonment when he was the favorite for the elections in 2018 until the election of far-right President Bolsonaro. One president impeached, another in prison. Our democracy is crumbling. <laughs> Petra, how did you get that access? You're with Dilma Rousseff and also throughout the film with Lula um, during, during what must have been some of the toughest moments of their political lives. Mm -hmm. uh, you're with Dilma after her impeachment. You're with Lula on his way to jail. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it feels like they trust you because they, you're up close and personal with them. Yes, it was a long time of work, actually. I, I wrote to them immediately when I started making the film long letters, which I later heard they never read, as well as to all the main political characters. Then I kept insisting every person I met in Congress, I would ask if they could introduce me to them. It never happened. I spent weeks, months in Brasilia waiting for an interview until the point that I got desperate and like inserted myself in a bus full of historians that were going to visit Dilma. Then I got to the presidential palace, handed her a DVD of my first film and asked for her for an interview. She granted me the interview and from that point on we started to establish a relationship of trust where she would allow me to get into the car with her. With Lula it was the same. But Bolsonaro gave me immediate access. Well, now that you've mentioned Bolsonaro, he has been highly critical of the documentary, calling it uh, fiction. What do you say to that? Don't do it. I mean, it, it, apparently he hasn't watched the film, so I think it's, it's, it would be helpful if he watched the film. These were the first images I filmed. By deafness or blindness, it was my first contact with this unrest. It left me asking. What had shifted? It's worrisome uh, for all the press in Brazil, but also for all artists ha which have been attacked by this government. Our film was attacked. Many, f uh, about 30 pieces of art were censored or self-censored since Bolsonaro took power. So we're really at the edge of democracy 
without having had a military coup. That's what's worrisome. Democracy today erodes through its own means, right? Through you have the public mm. ministry acting in a politicized way, the judiciary acting in a politicized way. And when you look, where, where is democracy? What really surprised me is how much this story would resonate right around the world. Other countries, other democracies uh, could understand what was unfolding in Brazil. Uh, what is the lesson here for so many of, of the countries right around the world? I mean, as a British producer, so many of the things that were happening in Brazil resonated with me uh, in terms of what we're dealing with in the UK. And I'm sure for American audiences, that's the same. All of our democracies yeah. seem to be fragile at this point, and it's really important to yeah. understand why they're fragile and why, how we need to protect them. I think Petra's work in this film shows how we do that and how, how fragile our democracies become. <laughs> Petra, a lot of the subtext of your film seems to be this quest for greater truth about nations and about democracy and how they thrive and how democracy dies. Did you find some kind of overarching answer to that question? Yes, I think what was interesting in researching democracy, Brazil has a very young democracy. It mm. was born more or less at the same time as me. Uh, I thought that it, wa I, it would have a uh, a very mature and healthy outcome, but suddenly in my 30s, while I was becoming stronger, democracy in Brazil was becoming weaker and weaker. But once I started to look at it, that's been the trend of democracy since its invention in ancient Greece. The elite has constantly tried to hijack democracy and destroy it because whenever democracy is thriving, they have to pay taxes, which they're not willing to. And it's interesting how repeatedly throughout history, democracy has been hijacked precisely for that reason, not wanting to pay taxes. Petra, uh, Joana, thank you very much to you both, ladies, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.